I don't want to alarm you, but I just built a computer capable of analyzing the flight patterns to Pluto, the scenic route. Sure, the Earth is flat and Pluto doesn't exist, it's just a night light in the sky that Flat Earth Santa turns on at night. But still, it's a good PC. So I just wanted to talk about the build we've come up with today so I can edit six 8K videos, side-by-side -side comparisons of the best cameras of 2031. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. For this computer, I was thinking of building it myself for the first time ever. I've never built a PC, but I've always kind of wanted to. You buy all the components yourself, put it together. Like, how good would that feel if it actually worked when you were done? That's what I was worried about, because I've heard too many stories of people. It's like they got everything right, and then Windows won't load, and they're just like, what do you do then? You're Googling shit, and it's like, I don't, I can't even... So I googled build your own PC Toronto just to see if anybody did that kind of thing like they order all the parts I want and then they put it together for me and deliver it. I found a guy Frank's computer hardware. This is not sponsored. I did not ask for a discount. I just bought it off him because he was so helpful. I was asking him all these questions. I'm just like I'm, I'm a video editor. I want to do 4k at least two 4k files if not eight 8k files. And I just, I want to laugh at it and I want a completely silent machine. Do you hear it? It's running, full blast. We have a PDF file open. That's one of the most stressful things a computer can do. PDF files, I hear nothing. But if you're looking to build a PC, I highly recommend this guy. I'll put a link to his site down below. It's just a Facebook site. But he just answered every question and he was talking me out of higher gear. Like he wasn't trying to rip me off. He was just like, oh, you know, AMD with their Ryzen, like they're so much better than Intel for the cost. And it's like, you know, you don't need this. And he tried to talk me down to 16 gigs of RAM, but I was like, no way, buddy. We're going up to 32. I had my 16 gigs in the laptop. I had, there was no way I was going with the same amount. But he talked me down from a bunch of stuff and we figured out he had a lot of great insight. So he helped me so much and he'll give you tech advice for like three years after you bought his PC. So I've had some questions after and he's always fast to respond. So super responsible. He just came, delivered it to me. He lives out in Burlington or something. He'll deliver all around Ontario. Maybe not, don't quote me on that. But mostly the GTA. Go visit Frank's. Let's all go to Frank's. <laughs> so I figure first we talk about the peripherals the keyboard, the monitor, speakers, all that stuff. And then we get into the actual PC build itself. So first things first, the monitor, I went with the BenQ PD2700U. I'm not looking at it, that's pure memory. I look up here when I remember things, always. I highly recommend you skip that one. I don't know what the hell they're thinking. It's a 4K monitor, IPS, 10-bit. It's like the color graders dream. Everybody's giving it the best reviews ever. And it has this input lag where the speech is lagging behind the volume. Just watching regular YouTube videos. I'm like, why is that? And it did have that in the reviews. There were some saying, oh, unbearable input lag. I was like, whatever, buddy, you gamers. Freaking out, first print, I couldn't kill enough people fast enough. It's like, for me, my life, it's probably not gonna, it mattered big. So I technically downgraded to a Quad HD monitor instead of a 4K. It's the LG 27 GL850B monitor. It's a gaming monitor, but after that input lag, I was like, I need faster input. The milliseconds is too high. So this is 144 Hertz. I think it's beaming my brain with nightmares. I don't, I feel weird. The first night I got it, I was like, what's happening? <laughs> I don't know what that is. The refresh rate, it hurts my face but I like it. No input lag. Looks nice. I can't, I had them both set up side by side. I couldn't tell the difference between this 2.7K and the 4K, zero difference. Slightly more space on the timeline. If you wanna look at these side by side pictures, that's a 4K timeline versus 2.7K. You got a little more space in Premiere Pro. The one thing I will say is I have this at the lowest brightness and that's as low as it goes and it's still a little bright at night. I wish it could go lower, but I'm the type of freak that just, I want calmness here. I don't want to be staring at electronics. If I could have an e-ink monitor, I would. Those e-readers, like they're so easy. So it can't go any lower. I'm a bit worried. I might die. 
For the keyboard, I also started off with a different one and ended up returning that. I'm a freak like that. If something's bad, I'm gonna take it back. So Amazon beware, I am your worst nightmare. So I wanted to get a mechanical keyboard. After having my laptop, the first thing I noticed from that laptop, it did me well. The Gigabyte Sabre 15, it flew all over Thailand. It edited 4K videos somewhat. It, it was a workhorse for me, but immediately I was making mistakes as I was typing. The keyboard was terrible. So I wanted a good mechanical one. I got the HyperX Alloy Cherry MX Red switches, and I didn't like it. The space bar hurt my thumb. It was like sharp, it was so weird. You press it, it's like, why on the corner? It's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And so I ordered one of those switcher testers so you can test all the different colors. For those who want to know, mechanical keyboards come in different color switches and it matters very much. The red feels very different. So after typing for like an hour, I was like, blue. They're a little loud. They're a little loud. But I'm happy. So this is the DOS Keyboard 4 Professional Clicky MX Blue Mechanical Keyboard. It was a little pricey. It was a little bit much for a keyboard. I did not want to spend it, but I was like, you know what? It has USB ports. So as a photographer myself, often seen in the fields, just taking pictures. Well, that's a nice cheetah you have. Pet cheetah. Didn't know those existed. Oh, I, no, I don't want glasses. Oh, he's getting closer to me. I don't know what the hell that was. Loser. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with me? Anyways, as a world renowned photographer, my keyboard doesn't have an SD card slip slot. I'm used to having that in my laptop. You just plug it in, boom. So I had this, boom, goes in my computer, keyboard, and it's right there. And so now I can just do that as if it was, you can't see any of that. Oh, I'm so sorry. See that? I will try to find links of the affiliate variety to put down below for all this stuff if you're curious, but this is good. Like I researched everything so far, pretty happy with the monitor, very happy with the keyboard. It's very easy to type. The speakers. These are my love at one site, first site. These are the JBL LSR 305s Mark II. Just phenomenal. I had the Mark I's before I left for Thailand and they just blew me away. I stood in a systematic <laughs> discovery panel. Just, I went to Long and McQuaid's and they had a soundproof room and I can't believe how much better things sound when you have soundproofing. It's ridiculous. So these sounded better than anything, hands down. For the price too, they're cheap, fantastic. And the Mark IIs are even better. 100% I recommend you get these if you make music or you just want professional clarity. It becomes between these and the Yamahas, 100% these have more bass, I love them. If you wanna to listen to music, watch movies, these are the better ones. If you want 100% accuracy, you get the Yamahas. We're almost getting to the PC. We're close. So in order to plug those speakers in, you need an audio interface. This seemed to be the best one, the Audient ID14. It has the best preamps, which this mic, I never use it except for singing. So, but I was going to do the whole show. I got the podcast going and then we canceled it. And so like I have this whole setup and I never use it for the videos because I don't really want this mic in my face. I could try it one day. See if you mind it. It's an amazing interface. I kind of wish I just would have went with the Scarlett. It was cheaper. The Scarlett 2 and 2. Just the only thing I don't like is every time you turn the computer on, you start from zero again. You got to raise the volume back up. Slight annoyance. Just minor things like that just make you want to karate chop it. And for those who don't know, I make all the music for both my channels. If you ever hear a song in my videos ever, I made it. So, and I'd do that with this little bad boy. I got this before going to Thailand. I had a bigger one, I wanted to downsize. It's been great. It's a utilitarian keyboard. It's not like fantastic, it's a little plasticky. It's not, it's so small, like you only got the two cords basically. There's not much to work with, but it takes up so little real estate, it's so tiny. I fit this in my backpack, it's like, 
I'm good to go with a laptop, this, a mouse. I could travel anywhere and make music of the kingdoms. And the last thing before we talk about the PC, my headphone stand that I just got. I love it so much. The Neato headphone stand. It's a headphone hanger. You stick it on something, and you got that for years. I've had my headphones just sitting on my desk, cluttering up my life. And now we got it out of the way, just perfectly hangs up there. The Sennheiser HD 380 Pro. They're amazing headphones. You want to go links down below? Wow, look at us. So I went to Frank's, he took care of me, and this computer ended up costing 2200 Canadian? 2242.18 cents. Canadian, that's like 11.99 American. And a cup of coffee. You're lucky over there. But yeah, his labor was only 180 bucks. And he was getting better deals on his components than I was finding elsewhere. So I was like, oh, how'd you get that cheaper? So yeah, good deal over there. Sometimes it's better to just hire an expert. You could spend hours and days and imagine all the frustration of building your own PC and things going haywire. Why not get somebody who's done it a thousand times? Probably 50,000. You're good to go. So the core of this beast over there in the mountains is the AMD Ryzen 5 3600X 3.8 gigahertz six core processor. Unbelievable. I've never went with an AMD, I'm a little nervous. My last one was an i7 Intel 7700 HQ. Y'all know what I mean. So far, it's laughing. I, I had three 4K files with color grading and it finally started to like stutter a bit. Three, four, like I'm talking the Fuji 4K 400 megabit files, and then two of the GH5S 200 megabit 4K files. And then they were fine, three of them, and then I added color grades to each of them, and then it was like, okay, that's heavy. It's a donkey, but like a somewhat injured rib donkey. He could carry it, just not fully. Contrast that with the Samsung NX1 file, just one 4K file, the H.265, I played it in DaVinci, it was stuttering. Like this can't even handle it. I don't know what to tell you about that. I was like, why? It should be storming through it. H.265 sucks. I could handle Gerald Dunn's 4K RAW, no problem. That file was 16 gigabytes if it was a foot. No problem, it's all about the codec. H.265 is terrible, it's so compressed and then your computer has to analyze every frame. We got the Gigabyte B450 Aorus Elite ATX AM4 motherboard. I didn't know if that was a good thing or not, but that's the one he recommended. It's like I could have went higher to get the SD card slot in there, but it would have been like so much more. Sometimes you gotta weigh your options. It's like this thing will end up being $4,000 by the time I'm done with it. We got two 16 gigabyte sticks of RAM, DDR4-3200, G-Skill Rip Jaws V-Series, of course. So 32 gigs of RAM, I'm laughing, I'll be able to edit the next Disney movie if they call upon me. I will. What's that? Take that, kappa. Now this is the main reason I upgraded, because I was running out of file space hard. My hard drive was a 256 gig SSD drive, and I had maybe 50 to 70 gigs free if I had no videos going. So you film a couple videos and I'm done. We're done. I can't edit more than one or two at a time, especially some of those like that Weeble S video was like 30, 40 gigs. I'm like, I can't just accept this, accept this video, be done with it. So now we got a one terabyte SSD drive, a crucial P1, as fast as Samsung, half the price, take that Samsung. It's an M2 2280 NVMe SSD drive. It was cheap, $132.99. It wasn't even that much more than the 500 gig one. I was like, oh, let's jump right up to 1T. No. I also got a two terabyte regular drive just for storage in there. It's slower. It's worth 7,200 megabytes, and I didn't realize it was a Seagate. I've had nothing, a problem, nothing but problems with Seagate. You see those little two yellow? The yellow and the red, those are little portable drives. A four terabyte and a one terabyte. And they're Western Digital? The WD Passport drives, and I've had no problems with them for years. Never corruption. I bought a Seagate one, the four terabyte, 
immediately it just it had problems running. It's like, what's wrong with it? If I flipped it upside down, then it would work. And sometimes it wouldn't. It was like, oh my God, I returned it immediately. I would have bought a Western Digital if I had known. I had the one terabyte, we jumped up to the two, but it jumped up to a Seagate. Hopefully it doesn't cause me any problems. I'm not a fan of the C. For the video card, we got the Asus GeForce RTX 2070. It's an eight gigabyte dual OC video card. That was $620. What the? Honestly, it's not even that important to video editing. I think it's getting important, but most computer programs utilize the CPU mostly. You're using like 80 to 90% CPU and then a little bit of your GPU will kick in, but not much. Still, I got a decent one now. If I ever want to play Tetris or something, I can do that. The case is the Cooler Master Master Case H500 ATX Mid Tower Case. It's got supreme ventilation. Two fans on the front, one in the back, and then two on the top. One of them was rattling, but Frank, he's gonna come on by and give me another one. It's like a factory default. Just the one fan, I tested it. It was driving me crazy. It's like this rattle, and I stopped and I was like, oh, it's that fan. So I figured out how to unplug it with Frank's help. He walked me through it like a baby. And I did it. Now you don't hear nothing, do you? We got a Corsair VS 650 watt 80 plus certified ATX power supply, $69.99. Wow. Couple fans, Windows 10 Pro, anything else? That's it for the PC builds. Let me know down below your thoughts on this build. What would you have done different for those computer wizards among us? I don't know, I trust Frank and his opinion and so far it's running things really well, more than anything I would need. Except in DaVinci Pro with the H.265, I can't believe I can't even run that. Like, it was such a problem editing that Samsung video. That little vlog on the street was lagging. I couldn't even play it. It would stop after like eight seconds. I was like, why? So let me know the solution to that. If I could have just done something in the settings. Make a proxy. Uh, proxy your mom. Hard. Oh no, the battery's flash. We can make it. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know what you thought of the build. Thanks for shopping through the affiliate links, subscribing for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.